Now we will start a new topic, demultiplexers. So in demultiplexer, we have one incoming signal. Let's say this is I. And if this is 1 to 2 D max, I have one select signal and I have two outputs. So this is, let's say, output 0 and this is output 1. So in the demultiplexers, we are trying to connect our input, one of the two outputs, in a way. This is doing the opposite operation of the multiplexer. So if we can write the functionality table for this, so I have this S, select signal, this is my output 1, this is my output 0. If select is 0, my input goes to output 0 and my output 1 is 0. So if the select input is 1, my input goes to output 1 and output 0 is 0. So we can also write the truth table for this demultiplexer. So I have S and I as an input. So I have four possibilities and my outputs are output 1 and output 0. So if the select input is 0, my I input will go to output 0. So this will be 0 and 1 and I have 0 and 0 here. So if my select input is 1, then my I signal goes to output 1. So it will be 0, 1 here and I will have 0, 0 for output zero so this is how it works and if we can look at the inside circuitry of this demultiplexers so basically we have two outputs right this is output one let's say this is output zero i will have an end gate here another end gate here so this i input goes both end gate and i select it with using this s signal so s signal is only enabling one of the end gates at a time if s is one output 1 AND gate is enabled if s is 0 output 0 AND gate is enabled right similarly we can design a 1 to 4 d max so in this case i will have two select lines let's say s1 and s0 again i have one input i and i will have four outputs let's say this is output 0 output 1 output 2 and output 3 so if you look at the functionality table for this, so we have two select lines and four possible combinations for the select lines and I will have four outputs. So if my select lines are 0, 0, my input goes to output 0. So this is I and the rest of the outputs are 0. So if my select lines is 0, 1, my input goes to output 1. So this is I. The rest of the outputs are 0. So if the select lines are 1, 0, my input goes to output 2. And the rest of the outputs are 0. Similarly, if my select lines are 1, 1, my input goes to output 3. And the rest of the outputs are 0. Similarly, you can also make a truth table for this. But I will not make it and I will directly draw the inside circuitry for this demultiplexer. So in this case, we will have four AND gates. So let's say this is output 0, output 1, output 2, and output 3. And my I input will go to all of these AND gates. So I have the select lines here S1 not and S0 not. So I have S1 not and S0 here. And I have S1 and S0 not for this end gate and I have S1 and S0 for this the last end gate. So we can make larger demultiplexes but we will be basically doing the same thing only we will be expanding our select lines and the number of end gates we have and the output right but I think you got the idea. So what is the application of demultiplexers? For example if we are using an multiplexer at the transmitter let's say i have a transmitter and i have a receiver here and i need to transfer four signals to the receiver but i have only one line between transmitter and receiver so in this case i need to use a demultiplexer at the receiver so this is a four to one max and i have a four to one d max here so this could be S1, S0, and I could have four different signals, let's say A, B, C, and D. And using this multiplexers and demultiplexer together, I was able to transfer all my signals, all these four signals to the receiver side. 
but I am using only one line between transmitter and receiver. So instead of using four different lines, I was able to use a single line here to transfer my signals, right? So this line could be very costly between transmitter and receiver. So using only a single line will save me some cost. So in order to use this single line, I need to use this multiplexers and demultiplexers between transmitter and receiver. Okay, so let's do an example for this demultiplexer. So we need to design 1 to 8 Dmax using only 1 to 4 Dmaxes. So we will have a single input. Let's say this is my I. I need to transfer this input to 8 different outputs. So, and I have to use 1 to 4 Dmaxes. So I will be connecting one of the Dmaxes here and I will be getting 4 outputs, right? So for the output, I need to use two 1 to 4 Dmaxes, right? So this could be one of them. This could be another one. So these are my select lines. So if I do this, right, let's say I have two select lines, S1 and S0. So here I can do this. I can connect one of these outputs to here and another one to here. So for this Dmax, I need to select between these two outputs and I need to select either the upper part or the lower part. So this is output 0, output 1, output 2 and output 3. So this 0, 1 is controlled by this select line. So I will be connecting my S2 here and I will be putting a 0 here. Right? So this will be either 0, 0, it will be either 0, 1. Right? So if S2 is 0, then I will be selecting one of the output 0, output 1, output 2, and output 3. If S2 is 1, I will be selecting output 4, output 5, output 6, and output 7. Right? So this part works fine. Now, I could have I either here or either at the bottom part. So for the select lines, I need to connect S1 and S0 here. And I also need to connect S1 and S0 here. If S1 and S0 is, let's say, 0, 0, then I will be connecting my input to the output 0. Similarly, if they are 0, 0, I will be connecting it to the output 4. And then the S2 will decide on where this I goes, right? I will either go to this side or this output. And then I will be implementing an 1 to 8 Dmax using 3 1 to 4 Dmaxes. So you can try other cases and then you will see this implementation is working for 1 to 8 Dmax.